What up, what up, YouTube? This is Mr. Traham at Mr. T Do Numbers, right? I'm coming back with you with some more mouth help. All right, this time we're going to talk about expanded notation, right? Uh, expanded notation in Texas starts around uh, fifth grade. Um, but you have early forms of expanded notation um, in third grade and fourth grade with expanded form, right? In fifth grade, you add the notation part. Right. Well, you know, expanding form means it's just separated by place value. For instance, 375 in expanded form is 300 plus 70 plus five. Right. So you will start seeing the expanded portion in third and fourth grade. But in fifth grade, you get to expanded notation. The notation part comes in and then in sixth grade, you continue notation. And then all the way up to high school, you got scientific notation and stuff like that. Right. So expanded notation. Um, I believe in teaching children what the words actually mean to expand something expanded. If something is expanded, it is stretched out. Right. Think of it like a rubber band. When a rubber band is expanded, it is stretched out. Right. So generally, when you're expanding something, you're stretching it out. Right. Notation in this instance is number times the place value spot that it's in, right? So I'm going to show a number expanded, and I'm also going to separate it by place value. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to put the number times the spot that it's in, right? So if you want three simple steps on how to do expanded notation, here they are. Step number one. Make parentheses for every number except zero. All right. So if you have a three digit number and none of them are zero, then you need three sets of parentheses. But if you're here and you have a four digit number, but one of them is zero, you still only make three sets of parentheses. And the reason why you do that is because zero has no value. So things like expanded form and expanded notation, you don't need to put that spot with the zero in it because it has no value in that place. All right. So make parentheses for every number except zero. Step two, you're going to put each number inside the parentheses to the left. Step three, you're going to put the multiplication sign, which is going to be an X in this example. Put the multiplication sign after the number then put the place value spot in fraction or decimal form, all right? So we're going to do a quick example. This is three and seven hundred five thousandths, all right? The three is my whole number and seven hundred five are my parts of a whole, all right? They're my thousandths, all right? So step one says Make parentheses for every number except zero. That means three needs a parentheses. That means seven needs a parentheses. And that means five needs a parentheses. All right. Now, just like expanded form the regular way, you put plus signs between each place value spot. All right. This is step one. All right. I made parentheses for every number except zero. Again, zero has no value in the hundredths place, so you don't need a spot. Step two, put each number inside the parentheses to the left. So I'm going to put the three inside the parentheses to the left. I'm going to put the seven inside the parentheses to the left. And I'm going to put the five inside the parentheses to the left. All right. That's step two. Step three says put the multiplication sign after the number. Three times, seven times, five times. All right. And the rest of step three says, then put the place value spot in fraction 
or decimal form. So sometimes when you're working out problems, you will see expanded form using fractions. And sometimes you will see expanded form using decimals. Now, I want you to realize fractions and decimals are the same thing. They are both parts of a whole. So when you get to the part side, you're going to show these numbers on the right side of the decimal point, either in fraction form or in decimal form. It does not affect the three because the three is on the whole number side. Both fractions and decimals are parts of whole. If you're on the right side of the decimal point, you're on the part side, right? So it will always be three times one because the place value spot of the three is the one whole spot, right? Now, seven times the place value spot that it's in. Well, seven is directly behind the decimal point, right? So seven is in the tenths place. All right, if you're talking about money, seven is in the dime spot, right? So it's seven times the tenths, right? So if we were talking about decimals, it would be seven times zero and one tenth, right? And you know it's correct because the one is in the same spot that the seven is in, directly behind the decimal point. So it's seven times one tenth, right? Now, Zero is in the hundredths place and five is in the thousandths place. So it's five times one thousandth or zero and one thousandth. And you know it's correct because the five is in the third spot from the right and the one is the third spot to the right. All right? Now, this is the decimal version of expanded notation. Now the this is step one through three in decimal form. Now I'm going to do the same problem again but now I'm going to do the fraction version of it. Again sometimes you will see the decimal version and sometimes you will see the fraction version, all right? So step one, I'm going to, again, make parentheses for every number except zero. That means three is going to have a parentheses. That means seven is going to have a parentheses again. Zero is not going to have parentheses, but five is. And again, I'm going to put plus signs between them. Now, I have successfully expanded the number. I have separated it by place value. Now, step two, put each number inside the parentheses to the left. Again, my three is going to be inside to the left. My seven is going to be inside to the left. And my five is going to be inside to the left. Step three, put the multiplication sign after the number. Three times, seven times, five times. Now, what's different this time is then put the place value spot in fraction form. I've already put it in decimal form, right? So it only affects the part side. This is still three times one whole, right? But when you get to the right of the decimal point, the parts, right? So I have seven times one tenth. Well, in fraction form, it's the same thing. Seven times one tenth, which is one out of ten or one over ten, right? This is one tenth and this is one tenth, right? Now, zero still does not have any value, so you still don't need a spot. But now the five is still in the thousands place, but instead of decimal one thousandth, I'm going to do fraction 1,000, 1 over 1,000. Again, this is step 1 through 3 in fraction form. Uh, 
Again, expanded notation means to stretch out the number and you're notating it by place value. You're putting the number inside the place value to the left and then you're putting times the spot that it's in. All right. This is Mr. Traham again at Mr. T. Do Numbers with your lesson for expanded notation. Peace.